morning, everybody. It's lovely to see you here this morning. Thank you for wearing your masks. We do have dispensation when we're leaving the service not to wear the mask. And if you're doing prayers or reading, you can take the mask off as you do that. So just to clarify that for everybody. Next Saturday, we have a wedding here in church. So I'm just going to read the, the bands for the third time. So I published the bands of marriage between Stephen Gott of this parish and Leanne Palmer of the parish of St. John of the Divine Sunday Lands. And this is for the third and final time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. And so we pray for Stephen and Leanne as they prepare for their wedding. Lord of love, we pray for Stephen and Leanne. Be with them in all their preparations and on their wedding day. Give them your love in their hearts throughout their married life together. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I shall hand over to Martin to lead us for our service this morning. I'm going to hear it. service this morning. Um, I'm going to drop into playing that lovely intro. We're going to have a little bit, a few more bits of music during the service, which you can hum along to, but you can't sing out loud to. Okay? Um, so grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also this is the day that the Lord has made. in the name of Christ, but for our praise and thanksgiving <coughs> to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand, so let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. So by the God of love, bring this back to yourself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator, redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. And may Christ your light ever draw in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, the day lies over before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so in the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And now we're going to have our two readings. Oops. Kings chapter 19 verses 9 to 18. 
spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a sound of fierce silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimishai, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Mahola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. <clears throat> Second reading is from Romans chapter 10. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, Who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. 
This is the word of the Lord.
together, all together, Psalm 85. I will listen to what the Lord God will say, for he shall speak peace to his people, and to the faithful, that they turn not again to folly. Truly his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace are kissed to each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give all that is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and direct his steps in the way. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Please stand for our gospel reading. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Immediately after feeding the crowd with five loaves and two fish, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against him. And early in the morning he came, walking towards them on the lake. Um, can we just stop you for a second before I go any further? There's some nice pictures coming up on there, so if you watch that, if you can do both with two eyes, that's wonderful. So there we go again. And early in the morning he came, walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him. Saying to him, You have little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, ceased, and those in the word boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Are you sitting comfortably? Yeah. Then I'll begin. I'm sure we all remember that, the ones that are here this morning. Woman, um, children's hour on the radio. We all sit down and we sit comfortably and then we listen to a story. <coughs> I don't want us to quite oh, the story today. Oh.
So I wonder, when was the last time you did anything frightening? Four years ago, we actually went on, not on this, this, this zip wire, we actually went on Goey in Grisdale. Because it was my dad's treat when he left us. So as part of his will, whatever, he said, I want all my family to go on zip wires. Because he had a little thing that he, he said, every day we should do something that frightens us. And I think there's some truth in that. But we need to actually not sit comfortably. Not just, oh yeah, this is a nice life. Actually challenge ourselves. To actually get out there and do something that is a little bit scary. A little bit frightening. And Pete's a good example. He actually stepped out of the boat. When was the last time you actually stepped out of the boat? Took some chance in your life. I went on those zip wires and the first, it was a little bit scary. Zooming across the valleys of Grisdale is a little bit scary. I would fancy actually doing that one in, it's in North Wales going to the mines in North Wales. My youngest son has done it with his girlfriend. They actually said it was wonderful. But a little bit scary. And Peter did something that was really scary. He actually had to step out onto water, which he knew, he was a fisherman, he knew what water was like. But Jesus said, come. And he did it. And he did what he'd been told to do. Asked to do, he actually said, go on, can I do this? And Jesus said, yes. Come on out. Come onto the water. Walk towards me. And um, when I was thinking about this, and I hate we played just before, 30 years ago or so, I actually went on the War of a Thousand Men. Now, I've mentioned it before, these last few years. But that was a little bit scary, because in an evening we would actually go out to whoever would actually listen to actually preach the gospel. And the scariest moment I had was when we actually went into a pub, which was a soldier's pub in Northumberland, and we actually had to speak then and preach the gospel to a pub full of soldiers. And that was quite scary. But the amazing thing is, they listened. And then after I'd spoken, they wanted to know more. And those are the occasions we need to be doing. When we think, oh, I'm not going to talk to that person. That's too scary. They do do that. But the amazing thing is, God gives us the power to do it. Like Peter when he stepped out of the boat. For a while, he actually walked on water, which of course is impossible. But he did it until he got scared, until he took his eyes off Jesus, and then he started to sink. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus, whatever we're doing, wherever we're going, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus, to do what he wants, but to keep our focus on him so that we are doing what he wants us to do. But of course, Jesus didn't let him sink. Jesus didn't let him sound, drown. <laughs> he reached out his hand and pulled Peter up. And Jesus is always there. Whatever we do, wherever we go, if we're walking in his way, Facing him, whatever storms in life we face, if we keep our eyes on Jesus, we can weather the storm. So remember, <coughs> Jesus is always there, but we need to do something sometimes that is a little bit frightening, a little bit scary. It might not be physically scary, but it could 
well be a little bit spiritually scary. Remember that Jesus is there. He's always there with us to lead us through whatever storm comes. And when we keep our eyes on him, Jesus will see us through the storm. Amen. So let's stand to affirm our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from high. We believe in one God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in His name and share His peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I want to share the peace. Let us pray to God for his help as we travel through the storms of life. Blessed is the Lord our God, for you are a very present help in our troubles. You are ready to hear our cry and come to our aid. Lord, help us not to be afraid, but to put our trust in hope and hope in you. May we ever rejoice in your love and care. Bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever. Lord, you have created us out of love and for your love. We ask for your protection in our troubles as we face life's storms, especially in these times of uncertainty. Bless all Christians and those who love other faiths who are struggling against great odds. We pray for those who are suffering from persecution violence and ridicule. We remember those whose lives are at risk and those who are exhausted. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for the work of the mission to seafarers and those who go out in lifeboats saving lives at sea. We pray for all whose work is upon the sea. We ask your blessing upon fishermen, merchant seamen, and the Royal Navy. We remember today all who are caught up in storms, in floods, earthquakes, and droughts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the safety of our homes. We remember those homes and families who live on Sunningdale Avenue and Sunningdale Crescent. May they live in peace and friendship with all around them. We pray for the work of shelter and remember all who are homeless and living on the streets of our towns and cities. We pray for all who are struggling with problems of debt and those relationships are breaking down. We pray for the people of Beirut as they come to terms with the aftermath of the explosion and horror of a lost city and lost lives. Lord, 
in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your blessing upon the world weary, the worried and worn, all who feel overwhelmed and unable to cope. We remember all who are ill at home or in hospital and those who care for them. We remember all doctors, nurses, surgeons and all care workers in nursing homes. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who need care, the elderly and ill of our churches, remembering those of St. Wilfred's, Halton, Nora Cleaver, Katie Victoria Price, Marjorie Cox, Angie Topham, Daphne and George Anderson, and from St. Luke's, Mary Watson, Peter Copeland, Michael, Jeff and Dorothy Prophet, Julia and Sheila Brotherton, Pat Howarth, William Hartley, Daphne Dale, Ronnie Etherington, and Betty Robinson, and Jackie Spence. May they all feel the warmth and healing power of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, stand by us when the last great storm seeks to overwhelm us, and we feel we are sinking beneath the waves. Help us to know that in you we will not perish, but have everlasting life. To you we commit all our loved ones departed, Remembering Molly Dixon and her family and their sad loss. May they rejoice in your presence and in your peace, now and forever. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son and the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. church in our day, and make her holy, strong, and faithful, for your glorious sake, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm just going to play, be still, the presence of the Lord in a moment. But from our reading from Kings, we read about Elijah hearing the still, small voice of God. And we need to spend time listening to God listening for that still small voice speaking to us. So we can try and concentrate on that while we have this here.
Nodding our prayers and praising to all. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Not much in the way of notices today. Um, just to remind you that it's um, Jonathan's mum, Molly's funeral on Wednesday at half past ten. Um, anybody can come. Because what we're going to do, if you can't get in, we're going to restrict it to the 30 inside, but we're hopefully going to spread it outside so that you can spread yourself social distancing outside on the lawns, and you should be able to hear the whole service from there. So that's half past 10 on Wednesday. Let us in prayer together. Heavenly Father, we embrace your call for us to make disciples, to be witnesses, and to grow leaders. Give us the eyes to see your vision, ears to hear the prompting of your spirit, and courage to follow the footsteps of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we say together, Grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and evermore. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.